And I think I would like to begin by addressing questions to our, our, pan our speakers. Over the last two days, you've had a chance to see the exhibit, and I'm sure you've been reading the catalog from cover to cover each night, like the latest Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, did we miss any major designers in the show, do you think? And I'll start maybe with you, Theo. Oh, that's a, that's a tricky question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been studying the catalogue. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's always designers. I mean, I think as a curator, you can, what you do is you tell a story. You too tell a story. And of course, this story ha could have been told with other examples, but in a way you would have still been telling the same story. So generally, I would say no. I mean, the story that you've created I think reflects European design quite well. And then, of course, some objects could have been replaced by others, mm -hmm. but uh, to, to sort of make um, a picture of, uh, of the European design since 1985, this is a, a good picture, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, I also think so. That's a, a really good picture you, you created here. And, and when I first uh, went through the exhibition, I thought I was a little bit frustrated because I saw all the big things, all the interesting things you have collected here. And uh, there are some things which are vicious for our museum. We, we Let's know, bring them home, Joseph, sorry. right? <laughs> there, there, are, there are objects I would like to have in Munich in our museum, and, oh. and we, we do not have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. But it's, uh, it's a, uh, I think it's a really good overview of European design and, and from, from the side of, from your side, from the side of America. And uh, from our side, maybe there, there would be something different, but there would be only very small changes, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. um, maybe there are as I'm from Munich, I'm from Germany, I would have shown a little bit more German design. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother-in-law and... Uh, <laughs> okay, a second question, I think, is what, do you think there will be any reaction in Europe to this exhibition and the catalog? Maybe start with you, Julie. Uh, well, it depends of, the, of us, because when we come back to Europe, we will promote and we will announce that in America are more interested on European de design than in Europe. So uh, it depends always, mm -hmm. uh, I'm agree with Cedric, about the media. If you invest and if you pay uh, the um, uh, establishes and so on public relations for to promote the exhibition, it will be a success. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I think he's closer to the truth than that. <laughs> I'm joking, no. Uh, it's, uh, it's very well done, it's good quality, uh, so uh, it will be uh, in, the, in the media, and uh, I hope it will be uh, to um, a discussion. Mm -hmm. But I think this is interesting. It's I, some ones it will, will, will say that maybe it's not enough, it's, it's too much uh, Dutch designers, or, but that's in, interesting and this is very European, is to criticize mm -hmm. and to be very polemic. I think it's very notable actually that it is the United States, it's you, that's making an exhibition on what has happened in the last, well, in our contemporary time design in Europe we would never, I think, ever get, or we could get the idea, but we would do the project, as Joseph said, we would be, oh, let's do about Sweden or Scandinavia or Northern Europe or maybe connections to, or um, about uh, the international brandings about, uh, um, like Eero Koivisto working for Capellini and so on, that those treasures, but, or those connections. But we, to make this, whole package to try to, to, to uh, make um, um, an analyze of, of this full period. It's interesting that it comes here first. Oh, 
Yeah. Cedric? Well, I think it's very fantastic that such an exhibition can be presented here in the United States. And that was like really highly unexpected. Um, especially because the Americans have the reputation not to be that much interested in design for the past decades. So I think that, that's absolutely fantastic and it proves exactly the contrary. Okay. And we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, no I noted that too. It was very interesting. Um, in a way, uh, the National Museum or the Design Museum as a whole are sort of still part of art thinking of, of art museums. Um, in Sweden, we also have, and I'm sure you have to hear too, but we call them ethnological museums uh, that would sort of show you the market. Um, we don't select, we don't even care about what people have, really have in their homes. But the ethnological museums, they preserve what people actually had, what people were, the genes, um, ordinary objects. They, they, the one in Sweden even bought uh, all the things that one homeless person had, and just to preserve a homeless home, uh, the home of a homeless person. And uh, we are elitistic, yes. We are unnatural in that way, yes. Um, but as the art history, I mean, everybody doesn't have a Rembrandt, I guess. Or is it just me? <laughs> Sorry. Anyone else want to answer, yes. well, address uh, that? I want to say that uh, the judging, the people, curators, we have two uh, dangers, two problems, usually. One is to have power. When you have power, uh, you start to do wrong things. At the, but the other is the mediocrity, because sometimes it's people that don't, uh, don't achieve to be a good designer and is a little bit frustrated and start to do uh, criticism or uh, journalism. So this is two dangers in our uh, role like uh, promoter. Other questions? Um, that's, uh, of course, it's interesting, yes. Uh, but I would say it's, it is very hard to, to point them out like this. I tried to, with the historical knowledge, or what you need to do, so to say, and the innovation part, and um, um, all these things, but the storytelling. But, but uh, for me to say you need to do this and this and this and this exactly doesn't work, because I th if you're talking about good design, in, or high quality design is also about this very non-verbal emotion. Otherwise, uh, some things have it, others don't. And this it thing is very hard to define. And uh, I guess that's, I could have shown a lot of pictures on this is good, this is bad, this is what we acquire, this is what we not acquire. But I think it's, um, being so precise doesn't really give you anything because it's also, we are part of a discourse uh, of our time that where we get influenced by the media, by the money, whatever, we're, 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 we don't stand aside from the society. And um, that's why also these criteria sort of changes and they are quite loosely. And I guess it also by working within this field for many years, you uh, train up some kind of um, yeah, you, you get trained in, in judging, but it's also this, that I, I feel that I get more and more um, uh, careful on this judging thing. I get more and more self-critical, uh, and I, I know that I will make, uh, Julie, I'm not afraid, I will make the wrong decisions. That's no, okay. Me too, a lot. Yeah, no, but you, you said you made uh, the wrong decisions, but... About this, be okay. um, I just... It's my feeling. I don't analyze. Uh, and I have a um, citation, quotation, of a um, Spanish uh, philosopher who say, because I'm not an object, I cannot to be objective. <laughs> I'm a subject, so I'm always subjective. 
Beautiful. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Well, yes. It's, it's, it's me. It's, I'm a subject, not an object. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I. I think it's not possible to have a guidebook with uh, the, the criteria what's good design. I tried In Germany, not. No. Wow. <laughs> Joseph, you let down your whole yeah, national yeah. tradition here. <laughs> if it don't exist in Germany, it don't exist. Hey, we had. <laughs> so funny. I think we had this design book uh, years before, in, 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 in the time of, of good form and functionalist design and so on. But uh, this has changed, as I try to, to explain in my speech also. And you have. Uh, it's not possible to have this objective criteria. We try to, ha to find some, some things, as I uh, spoke about uh, intellectual charging, about historical charging, and um, also about the aesthetic charging. But you need, I think, you need some experience, and sometimes you need also the feeling. And it's, I agree with Julio, it's subjective. Okay. But Cedric, the French must have a law about good design. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I, I, I think that we're not looking that much for good design any longer. We're more looking for good stories. And that's the main issue. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Of yes, course, I mean, time doesn't. and history make the difference. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Um, I... I acquire a lot of, I mean, really contemporary objects from today. It's my main job. And it is impossible, of course. Um, that's why I, I, I have this idea of what will people want to see in 100 years, which is also impossible, of course, but that's my only guiding kind of idea. Um, but of, of course, with time, the selection is made by itself. On the other hand, and that's important to me, um, history can be rewritten and if we, as I said, if in, in 10 years there will be some objects that we will think were so very important from today and in 20 years there will be two other objects and that's why working on contemporary field you have to be sort of a wider, more open and having a wider perspective, I think. Well, you have to think that Jean Prouvé was only rediscovered by um, the middle of the 80s. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the best example. Yeah. We'll start with Joseph. Um, I don't want to take one object for, as example. I think if you look through the exhibition and if you look at the Dutch design objects. For me, the Dutch design is the most influential and important design of the last years. Like drug design. They changed so many things. And um, they opened also uh, the, the, the minds and the spaces. And this was a, an enormous change. This was, in my eyes, the biggest change after the, the breakthrough uh, with Memphis and, and postmodernism. Okay. Well, I repeat, one is Memphis, Sotsas, because break with the history of industrial design. But the second one is a good new, is some one of Droch, because it's the end of the object and the start of the concept, the service, the, the history, the, the tale. No more the object, but the tale. Cedric? I would take a centerpiece by Studio Job, which is presented in the exhibition, which is really interesting, really interesting to me, um, because it's really connected to history and to the long history of decorative arts in Europe, and at the same time, it's also a break. So um, this piece is absolutely, I mean, this piece, but also a lot of pieces that are designing, we'll say, in, in the history, in my opinion. Okay. See ya. Yes, I, I, even though I work with collecting objects, I also think that it's not, it's, it's very seldom one object that sort of changes history. It's more, like you said, the Drug phenomenon. It's a phenomenon, it's a way of thinking. And that, these, that's why I answered you, do, we, do I miss any objects? Well, if you would have excluded the Drug phenomenon, yes. But 
it's not that we should have had that object instead of that that you're showing. It's more the, mm -hmm. the phenomenon. It's the development. That's what's interesting to me. So I would also like to pass on the question of choosing one specific. I think maybe, maybe if it would have been a, a show in Europe, it would have looked differently, definitely, yes. I can't say really how, maybe, but I think it's a good, uh, I mean, this is, this is an exhibition for the American audience, which I guess are not supposed to be as familiar with the in design and development in Europe as we would have been ourselves. Uh, I think, I think it worked, though, with this kind of modernistic white cube um, podiums and, and so on that they are presented in the quite museo museological, traditional kind of way, if you understand what I mean. Uh, that always works, because then you, the objects come closely. And maybe, I don't know, if, if one would have sort of made more crazy, if Jersey would have exhibited it, it would have looked quite differently, of course, and, and there With would scum. have been a pool. Sprayed everywhere. I'm, maybe I missed the pool thing, yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> get under. Uh, I think that we would have probably given more importance to the designers and, and to the companies, um, maybe than only to the products, so that would be done maybe in a different way about that point specifically. Okay. Well, I miss the process. I love drawings, I love uh, models, I love uh, molds, so the process to achieve the final design. In the exhibition, it's beautiful because it's just the final design, and I love to show the process. So I miss a little bit some sketches, some uh, the process. Uh, I love that okay. for improve. It's Yours very good, eh? but um, for improve. <laughs> I'm uh, not sure if the Europeans have, uh, if, they, if they try to do this, to categorize <coughs> The design here. You have, you have your uh, different uh, themes, and I think it, this is very interesting, and it's necessary um, and, and useful to to go through the exhibition. And I'm not sure if, if, if Europeans uh, have the ability or, or want to to do such a, a strict. Uh, Categorization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. It's judgment day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>